Michelle the Bachelorette are with us tonight uh, on Bachelorette Night here in the USA. Are you watching The Bachelorette this season? <laughs> I feel like half of you are lying, but that's all right. Uh, we are getting a sense of what we may have to look forward to in the race for president in 2024. Why we're talking about the race for president in 2024, I have no idea, but since we are, Joe Biden was asked and says he expects to run again, even though he will be 82 years old. He's planning to either run for re-election or take out a reverse mortgage on the White House. <laughs> Some Democrats are, are hoping that um, Bernie will be the nominee again, but he's 80, right? Bernie Sanders makes Joe Biden look like Timothy Chalamet. Uh, <laughs> but make no mistake, Joe wants you to know he is in. They've even unveiled their new slogan, which is, get on my lawn. <laughs> and of course, the other big league question is whether or not Orange Julius will run against him. Some say he won't. Even his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, thinks he won't, which I find very difficult to believe. I think he's desperate for attention and needs to be president to get it. I mean, right now, he's not allowed on Facebook. He's not allowed to tweet. He calls into these right-wing cable news channels, and that's really it. For five years, he monopolized every moment of our lives. And uh, I don't know. I'm not interested in that anymore. In fact, from now on, I feel like if, if I'm forced to show a new clip of Donald Trump blabbering about this or that, from now on, the emperor will appear with no clothes. But it's a book that shows you the beauty of the United States of America. With many beautiful photographs here. There you are examining the wall with the Xi, with Netanyahu, with other world leaders, Putin. This is a very positive, really wholesome book, particularly for the holidays. It's been a great honor. Thank you very much. God bless. Oh, he's tanning all over. Well, so anyway, last night was uh, no, it's a, it was a disappointing night for the QAnon crowd last night. The 200 craziest people in America gathered again at Dealey Plaza in Dallas for the resurrection of JFK and or JFK Jr. Uh, the idea he would rise from the dead to reinstall Donald Trump as president of the United States. And I guess it didn't happen. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, say what you will about these lunatics. You have to admire their dedication. I mean, they've been there for weeks now. Somebody's 20 minutes late, I go home. So, <laughs> sadly for them. I, you know, I was thinking about this last night, and I thought, what if, what if John F. Kennedy and his son really did show up in Dallas? What if they rose from the grave? Like, how would we handle that? <laughs> what would we do? We'd have to rethink everything, right? Or what if they were half right and Ted Kennedy showed up from the grave? <laughs> Like a, like a bunch of wine coolers or something like, you know? <laughs> there are a lot of Lululemons out there right now. The uh, My Pillow man, Mike Lindell, had quite a weekend, uh, has one planned. He's hosting a 96-hour-long thanks-a-thon on his website. He'll be no, doing all his greatest hits about election fraud and whatnot. He announced today that he's planning to bring his case to the Supreme Court in order to, quote, do a new election. I'm sure they'll get right on that. I mentioned last night, Mike Lindell invited me to call into his Delusia Palooza this weekend, which honestly I would enjoy doing. I would, I'd probably let him come over for Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> but he goes on and on about the election. My father tells us about his knee surgeries. And really, I think they could cancel each other out. But my wife isn't as excited about me getting on a Zoom with a bunch of conspiracy theorists over Thanksgiving as I am. So now Mike may be forced to do this. You know, we could actually try and get a, you know, a Jimmy, you know, he's got a fake Mike on his show. I would really like to get a fake Jimmy. I'd like to surprise him with something. Okay, the guys in the control room are all laughing at that. They like that idea. A, a fake Jimmy. <laughs> Let's bring Jimmy out. You know what? If he does I'm gonna if he doesn't commit, okay, if he doesn't commit, I think we should look into that. I, I do. You know, I agree. I really do. All right, well, now I'm not going to commit because I'm dying to see who the fake Jimmy is going to be. I mean, I have to... That would be fun, right? I mean, <laughs> what are they going to come up with? <laughs> Mike Lindell's been flying around the country trying to get state attorney generals to sign his lawsuit so that he can get it to the Supreme Court. He also says the Republican National Committee and Fox News are trying to silence him. Last night on one of these uh, flights to who the hell knows where to get somebody to sign who the hell knows what, Lindell called into his own show, and that went just perfectly. So I don't know if I, Brandon, how am I coming in on... Loud and clear. The picture is perfect. Loud and clear. Can you, am I squished at all, or can nope. you see me? 
you're good. You you can pull back a little bit, but other than that, it's great. I think my head looks too big here. <laughs> Um, now you now you're breaking up that you, now that, that you've just, did you yeah, just, yeah, we're gonna lose you i'll catch you at uh, ten thousand feet we'll be back all right sounds good and yeah, it's hard hard to believe that this website isn't catching on with the masses you know but uh and it, by the way it only got better from there let's do donor event donor event donor event boy the more money we can raise we can surely win because we know how to advertise on TV. All right, we may have just lost him for a second. He's at 10,000 feet. Do we have Sean with us, Logan? What's that? I, I, I've seen the people that advertise. Mike is back. Including people. Even the Wi Fi is conspiring against him now. What are they going to do on this marathon for 96 hours this weekend? 96 is a lot of hours in a row. I think, you know, I think we need to check in on Mike and ask him, uh, do we have him? Is our connection? Oh, oh there he is, Mike. What? Mike. Jump, at, jump at your hold the fat. You're not supposed to be alive, you darn what? No, you that, Mike, it's be? not, it's not the beef talking. It's, oh, it's Jimmy Kimmel. Not for crying in the rain, not now, Jimberly Kimberly. I don't got time to fool around. Wait, where are you? I'm in the back of the Frank Speech Mobile Command Center. We got to stay on the move so the deep sea can't track us. Well, it looks like a refrigerated box truck. Are I'm you? From, yeah, look, are... I'm, I'm from Minnesota. I don't get cold, Jim. Oh. My mom gave birth to me over an ice fishing hole on Lake Minnetonka. <laughs> Besides, this is how I'm going to stay awake for 96 hours. Sub-zero temperatures. They're nature's crack cocaine. Oh. And I do use nature's crack because the Holy Spirit and the Second District Court of Wanapasana County say I can't smoke real crack. <laughs> Ever since I woke up punk dude at the old spaghetti factory. Oh, wow, that's a zeller. <laughs> but I'm worried you're gonna get hypothermia in there, Mike. Well, God willing, then I won't have to take any potty breaks. Like my grandpa and Bawabic used to say, you can't make yellow if your cranker's frostbit. Right. Juno, stay off the sidewalk. What? I got my nephew Juno driving. Wait, isn't Juno like 12 years old? Yeah, look, don't get your sack tangled. He grew up on a commercial fishing boat in Manila so he can handle a diesel engine. I see. Well, that's not, that wasn't exactly what I was worried about. But anyway, Mike, I saw you. I know you invited me to appear on your thanksathon. That's and right. Look, Jim, it's packed but we can squeeze you in. How about you got Thursday at 5? Thursday at 5 That's the, we're the worst time. That's right in the middle of Thanksgiving dinner. So How I, about I pencil you in right after Steve Bannon does 99 bottles of beer? Oh, Steve Bannon's going to sing? No, I booked him to drink 99 bottles of beer and drive his El Camino through Nancy Pelosi's garage door. Good gussy, I can't feel my toes. Maybe you should get some hot tea or something I'm like that. fine. I got 11 cases of Monster energy drink. Oh. Uh, these biscuits, I tell you, they're harder than when I was than when I, when I, that, during that Buffy the Vampire Slayer marathon on UPN. That's <laughs> what? pretty hard. Uh, wow. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, darn it, it's stuck. Oh, no. It's stuck. It's stuck. Stop, son of a... Yeah. Stop. Just get Stop. some wa water on that. Are you okay? That's going to leave a blister, I think. Yeah, I think so, okay, too. Okay, listen, how about I put you on right before JFK Jr. emerges from his cocoon? Uh. Or I can squeeze you in between the diamond and silk wet sweatshirt contest and a Papa John reading a Huckleberry Finn. Well, look, Mike, those both sound, that sounds like a lot of entertainment, but, uh, and as much as I appreciate the offer, I don't think I can make it. Come it's... on, Jim! I gave you a four-time slot! I know, but, oh my God, what? I got a finger snapped off. No, I'm down to 10. Oh, my. I gotta soak this in milk so they can reattach it. Okay. Juno! Bang a Yui! I lost another digit! Okay, Mike, I, you seem busy, so I'm gonna let you go. Oh, it's too dangerous there. Mayday! Mayday! Uh -huh. Abandoned track! Uh -huh. I wish him luck, and, and happy Thanksgiving to Mike Lindell and the whole crew there at Frank's speech. You know, Thanksgiving's on Thursday, and doctors are worried that with everyone gathering indoors, it could be another wave of COVID, which this would be like the fourth or fifth 
I don't know. At this point, they're like American Pie movies. I, I, <laughs> everyone remembers the first one, is, but is surprised to hear there were a lot more. But one thing is, is for sure is that we are in much better shape this Thanksgiving than we were last Thanksgiving. And to prove it, once again, we opened the coronavirus time capsule to look back at what was in the news a year ago this week. We've done it again in a Turkey Day edition of This Week in COVID History. This week in COVID history, as we end November 2020, President Butterball is for the birds. I hereby grant you a full <laughs> pardon. Victory! We've won the war on Thanksgiving. Passengers in the United States have set a pandemic air travel record, despite a warning not to travel for the Thanksgiving holiday. Let's just confine the celebration to the family unit that lives with you. Stop rocking the gravy boat, Doc. If you're going to see grandma for the holidays, it's suddenly a super spreader event. For many people, this is their final Thanksgiving, believe it or not. And for some, it's their final Thanksgiving as president. Today, Wisconsin completed a recount that confirmed Biden's win with a small boost, adding 87 votes. Ahoy, ahoy, it's the Fox phone. Who's calling at this hour? Joe Biden did not get 80 million votes. They did dumps. They call them dumps, big, massive dumps. Speaking of massive dumps, the conduct of the president's legal team has been a national embarrassment. Unless the legal situation changes, Joe Biden will be inaugurated on January 20th. Oh, say it ain't Joe. But Trump remains steadfast, fielding questions from his adorable little desk. Between you people, don't ask, don't talk to me that way. You're just a, you're just a lightweight. Don't talk to me that way. Don't talk to I'm the president. I'm the president. But not small talk. This is this week in Congratulations on making it to the end of a YouTube video. Why not celebrate by clicking the subscribe button? You earned it.